أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We're going to read chapter chapter 22 verse 39 to the end tonight Okay, Marlon, go ahead, please Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It is permit, permitted for those who have indeed suffered injustice to fight, and indeed God is most assuredly all-powerful to grant them victory. These are the ones who have been evicted from their homeland unjustly, unjustly, just because they said our Lord is God. And if it were not for the fact that God defends some people against others, indeed the churches, the synagogues, the chapels, and the mosques, wherein God's name is frequently mentioned, would have been destroyed. Indeed, God helps those who help him. Indeed, God is all-powerful, almighty. These are the ones whom, if we establish them on the land, uphold the contact prayers, give the cleansing charity, and enjoin righteousness and forbid evil and to God all matters are referred. And if they reject you, then again, so did the people of Noah, Od, and Thamud previously, as well as the people of Abraham and the people of Lot. And so did the dwellers of Midian, and Moses was also rejected. Then I granted them a respite. Then I punished them. Consequently, how terrible was the situation for the rejecters. And many a community we annihilated because they committed injustice. Then it ended up as ruined buildings with dried wells and empty palaces. Why do they not travel throughout the land to find out that they have minds that they can think with and ears that they can hear with? Then indeed the real blindness is not of the eyes, but it is the blindness of the heart inside the chest. And they challenge you to bring upon them the suffering, and God never breaks his promise. And indeed, a day of your Lord is like a thousand years according to your count. And many a community I gave them time, despite their transgression. Then I punished them, and to me is their final destiny. Say, O you people, I am indeed only a manifest warner. Therefore, as for those who have attained faith and led a righteous life, reserve for them our forgiveness and a generous provision. As for those who turn their best, who try their best to render our proof insignificant, they are dwellers of the inferno. And we did not send any messenger or any prophet before you that Satan did not interfere with his wishes. However, God nullifies Satan's interference and God establishes his proofs, and God is all-knowing, all-wise. This is in order to set up Satan's interference as a test for those who have a disease in their heart and to harden their hearts. And indeed, those who commit injustice have gone too far in animosity. And in order for those who possess knowledge to know that indeed this is the truth from your Lord, and therefore to believe in it, and to then humble their hearts, and indeed God is the guide for the faithful to a straight path. And the doubt of the unfaithful will not lessen until the hour comes to them suddenly, or they receive the paralyzing suffering. The kingship belongs to God on that day. He will rule amongst them. As for those who are faithful and lead a righteous life, they will be in blessed paradises. And those who have disbelieved and rejected our signs, they will receive a humiliating suffering. As for those who emigrated in the cause of God, then they got killed or died. God will indeed provide for them a beautiful provision. And indeed, God is the best provider. He will indeed admit them into a place that is pleasing to them. And indeed, God is all-knowing, clement. It is decreed that if one avenges and injustice, then suffers because of it, God will surely help him. God is indeed pardoner, all forgiver. This is the fact that indeed God turns the night into the day and turns the day into the night, and indeed God is all hearer, all seer. 
This is because God is indeed the truth, while everything they call upon besides him is indeed falsehood. And indeed God is all exalted, all magnificent. Do you not see that indeed God sends from the sky water, whereby the land becomes green? Indeed God is kind, cognizant. To him belongs everything in the vacua and everything within matter. And indeed, as for God, he is rich, praiseworthy. Do you not see that indeed God has subdued everything on the land for you and the ships sailing in the sea according to his command? And he keeps the vacuum from merging with matter except by his permission. Indeed, God is all compassionate, all merciful toward people. And he is the one who granted you life, and he will put you to death, and then he grants you life again. Indeed, the human being is most unappreciative. And for every community we decreed rituals, which they uphold. Therefore, do not argue with them and invite to your Lord. Indeed, you are rightfully guided. And if they argue with you, then say, God knows everything you do. God will judge amongst you on the day of resurrection regarding everything you disputed. Do you not know that indeed God knows everything in the vacua and matter? Indeed, this is recorded. Indeed, this is easy for God. And they worship besides God what was not authorized by any revelation, and they have no knowledge thereof. And those who commit injustice have no helpers. And when our proven signs are recited to them, you will recognize denial in the faces of the unfaithful. They all must attack those who recite our signs. Say, should I inform you of something worse than this for you? God has promised hell to the unfaithful, and it is a miserable destiny. O you people, a parable is cited, therefore listen to it. Indeed, those who call upon others besides God They cannot create a fly, even if they all band together. And if the fly steals something from them, they cannot find it. Weak are the pursuer and the pursued. They never value God as he truly should be valued. Indeed, God is all-powerful, almighty. God God chooses messengers from amongst the angels, as well as the people. Indeed, God is all-hearer, all-seer. He knows their past and their future, and to God all matters are referred. O you faithful, bow down, prostrate, and worship your Lord, and do good deeds that you may be successful. And strive in the cause of God a true struggle. He has chosen you and has has not put any hardship on you in practicing your religion. This is the nation of your father Abraham. He called you Muslims previously and in order for the messenger to be a witness among you, and you will be witnesses amongst the people. Therefore, observe the contact prayers and give the cleansing charity, and hold on to God. He is your Lord and the best Lord and the best supporter. Okay, Marshall, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any questions, comments, observations? Uh, Salam, sir. Uh, 39 and 40, the first two. Yes. As I understand that, the only time the believers can initiate a fight is if it's due to being displaced by religious means. Well, I mean, this is, this is a time that they have been, they have been attacked by somebody. And I, I can see that, that it, it refers to the time that they are doing this because they worship God alone. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, no, I, I understand if, if someone attacks you, then you can, you can protect yourself. But I mean yeah. to, as I see it, they have been attacked, displaced, lost their homeland or whatever, and they can initiate the war or initiate the fight but only under those circumstances, not for economic or anything else. But, I mean, I, I see this also as a, as a form of defense because they didn't do this. They have been evicted from their homeland unjustly. 
Yeah, that's what so, I mean. They were evicted. They were kicked out. Yeah, they were kicked out, yes. So they want to go back. They can initiate this new fight, but well, only because of that one, one specific idea. But that's still considered defense. Hmm. Because, because they did not, they did not, they were not the aggressor. The aggressors, they kicked them out of their homelands, and then they said, okay, now what should we do? God says, now it's permitted for you to go ahead and do this. Who are you guys? These are the guys who are who have been kicked out of their homes, and now they, are, they have the right to defend themselves. I don't see this as an aggression or initiating something. This is just in response, in this, this, in response to, the, to the initial aggression that was done by other people upon them. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was kind of, you know, the word evicted uh, is what, you know, because usually when you evict somebody, done, they're gone, they're out, it's over. They're gone. So now they want to come back. That seems like a initiation after a, a, a previous event. But it is in response to an aggression. Yes, it was originally an aggression, yes, and they were evicted and thrown out. Yes. I don't know exactly. how long between the two periods it that, was. But. That's irrelevant because now they have the right to go back to their homeland. Right. Okay. Yes, Thank sir. you very much, sir. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Salam alaikum, Ali. Alaikum salam. Yes, uh, manager, go ahead, please. I have a question in regards to the last verse, 78, okay. and the part, the part that he says, he called you Muslims previously. Is yes. God talking about the Abraham era? Like those people who submitted to Abraham, they were called Muslims, or in general, throughout many other messengers and prophets? Let me go there. Let me go there. Uh, just one second, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So he says. He says, and striving the cause of God, a true struggle. Uh, he has chosen you and has not put any hardship on you to pr in practicing your religion. This is the nation of your father Abraham. He called you Muslims previously, and in order for the messenger to be a witness amongst you and you will be witnesses amongst the people. Therefore, observe the contact prayers and give the cleansing charity and hold on to God. He is your Lord, the best Lord, and the best supporter. This he in here, it says he called you Muslim, that he is God. Mm -hmm. It's not Abraham. Okay? Yes, that part I understand, but the word Muslim, is, I understand that when we say Muslim, it refers to the submitters, correct? And not just the, the word Muslims that it's used nowadays throughout the world. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah, the word is Muslim is a peace offerer. Perfect. Thank you. Sure. Gosh. Sure. Anything else? Anything? Salam alaikum. Walaikum salam. Yes. Uh, Forty six. Forty six. And last part of it. it uh, yes. And travel throughout the land. Uh, and why do they not travel out through the land? Yeah, you see that what what goes blind is not the eyes. Blindness is 
not the blindness of the eye, but the blindness of the heart inside the chest. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that, you know, that someone who can be blind physically. Yes. Yeah, through submitting. Yes. So when he doesn't see, it's not the, it's not the sight that the message is giving us here. It's somebody who is unable to see the truth. Exactly. And that's what blindness is. And it's the blind. Yep. That's exactly true. Yeah. Well, and I think it's twenty two seventy four, I believe. Or seventy two. Let me see. It says they never value God. Yeah, I should do that. Yes. And not value God. Yes. And uh, they never value God as it really should be valued. Yes. So when we, you know, make up all kind of names for God, yeah. do all kind of stupid things, yes. and as though God is some old man with <laughs> bifocal glasses sitting somewhere in the seventh universe, no, <laughs> does not know what's happening here. And they, they don't value God. That's what's yep. causing all this corruption, lying, stealing, cheating. Because as you say today, you know that everything is watching you and looking. You know, you are not alone. Yeah, yeah. You have that physically, wherever you are, that you have been watched. God is with you every second. And that's very powerful. Well, I mean, there's always physical interactions between you and your surroundings. Exactly. And they're all connected to God. Yes. And depending on what you are, you see what you are doing, you're affecting your environment. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, this is a scary thing that people don't don't realize. And They keep they keep records of these things, and that's what that's what he says in in uh, in, uh, in chapter forty three that we read today. Okay, verse eighty. That's exactly what it says. It says that that you know that our messengers are there recording, and you know this is not going to go away. These events are not going to go away. Yeah. I'll record it. Yeah. When you see for someone is stealing something, usually in those uh, closed circuit uh, TV videos, and you will see that they're watching somebody. Somebody is watching me. You know, they would be looking around. So and then they will start stealing, and they will look around all the way. That's how we are. We think, you know, just look for any people that's watching me. You're not aware that the walls are watching the. <laughs> The doors are watching you, everything. Everything, everything. Everything, the yeah. air is watching you. You see, the vacuum is watching you by itself. Okay. Yeah. Every time, every time you're walking in the vacuum, you're basically distorting the space. And mm-hmm. you know, it depends on, depends on what, what state of being you have at that time, what you were doing, what you were thinking, is affecting that, that space. And, and people really don't realize these things, that, that these are being recorded. Every second, every microsecond of your life is being recorded. MashaAllah. You know, being aware of that, the awareness of that, change your whole thinking and your, when you are alone even, but you know, by yourself. It's knowing that you are with a company. <laughs> makes you life, think yeah. what? Every action and every behavior that we do behind doors. Yeah. Yeah. Wa alaikum salam. Salam, Dr. Fazli. Salam, Shakira. Yes. I was going to mention something about that same verse. They do not value God as he should be valued. Yes. And then it says in Surah 3, verse 10, yes. 
surely as for the unfaithful their money and their children will have no value at least in the least at god yes and they will be fuel for hell yes we are not valuing god and valuing all these material things yeah and then we are not even understanding that remember in sura 64 it talks about your some people in your family can sometimes be your enemies yes exactly yeah yeah so this one and another verse that i looked at was 2247 we talked yeah. about a day at god is a thousand years you are what you counting yes yeah and you know what i was just thinking about it and a thousand years for 24 hours right that means even if you are 100 years old you lived only 2.4 hours yes <laughs> i mean god really makes that true because when they go back like if you read sura 23 i, I saw this verse there and i made me think um 23113 he said how many years did you last as matter they would say we lasted a day or part of a day ask those who keep count so if god is really i mean all the everything that is in the verses and you can find corroborating verses that actually he said you only last is a little while if you could only realize it they do realize it though when they uh, when they in hell they do realize it that they don't even we just met that's what they say yeah and you were talking just go ahead they realize it when reality hits them in the face yes too late it's too late yeah the other thing you were talking about at um, sorry uh, on the juma you are talking about um, vacua and matter right and all the collective conscious like basically the matter that we are surrounded with but it to me it all i also thought about the animals how badly somebody treats them even they have memories even they are looking at everything even they can they are also going to be you know witnesses for us of course yeah. is that true yes of course but you know people yeah. are going to deny these things we see it in front of us there is tape recording of things that's going on and people are denying these facts okay yeah. you know i mean <laughs> people and they do the same thing on the day of judgment this is why all of these systems are created by god that there is really no place to escape is completely impossible so god has had so many recording devices that there is just not even an iota of uh, doubt is going to remain in the heart of those people who are going to deny it Okay, that's why they say they confess their sins. That's why God says that in the Quran. Right now there are pictures, there are recordings, there are everything that somebody is saying, okay, something. Okay, and I don't want to get into politics, but I mean, look at this. There's recording of the thing that he says, I need 11,000 votes. Okay? And he denies it. Yeah. And then there are some people who say, yeah, he's right. He's telling the truth. But what about the recording? But you see, this is again, as I said, uh, you know, we have we have to go through this this exercise all the time. That God wants to make absolutely sure. That's why in in this chapter twenty two we said, you know, those those iron pots that they are going to be, you know, all of these really graphic descriptions. Okay, this gory description of hell, how hell, how bad hell is. Okay. just to make sure that people understand it and say and they have judgment well we didn't know it was this bad okay had you told us we would we would be better people or something like that no you were told that it is really bad okay in the language that you understand but you you actually ignore it and did not deny it and so all these excuses are going to be there on day of judgment because we are using the same excuses today here people are lying and cheating and all kinds of stuff 
okay? So, you know, uh, that's that's the way it is. That's the way that, you know, that the world turns and God is making sure that all of these things are being recorded and 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 uh, uh, kept. All those recorders, recording, recordings are kept for everybody to see. So there won't be any doubt in the mind of anybody. And so with that situation, what they have to do is they have to confess, confess their sins, their transgressions. Okay? Yes. Also, you know, God talks about the heart so many times. Yes. And that verse in Surah 2 that talks about their hearts are so hard and even harder than the rock that breaks and, and water runs through it. Yeah. And so this is it. I mean, that you, basically the truth is that nobody is ever going to change uh, Unless God wills it and they choose. And he knows people might choose just choosing for the sake of, you know, moving their lips. But yeah. in reality, he knows, he knows who is who and who is not. Yes. And so all these tests, they can see themselves failing again and again. That's the only reason having the test and making all these things God already knows anyway. Yep. I think if you're a real believer, you'd be crying all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really, because, I mean, look at the horrendous mistakes we already, I already made in my life. Yep. And then all those things, when you think about it, you know, how, I always think, how is it possible for me to go to heaven? When, because if this mathematics is so crazily hard to actually, I mean, the, the mountains, the hoopo, all these animals, everything, all of vacuum and matter are far more intelligent than us, than me. They are, right? I mean, you look at the walls and you think that, oh, you're so smart, they're inanimate. They're not. Yep. Everything around us is far more, has a much better IQ. If you talk in terms of IQ, which I think yep. is useless because, I don't know, this, this is how it is and it, it looks like practically impossible to find your way, way back to God but he's doing his best by giving telling us all his attributes and how he's going to help us navigate this thing that we brought upon ourselves yep yep thank you so much thank you Okay, anything else? Any other comments or observations or discussions? Assalamu alaikum. On uh, 2252. And yes, yes, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous to. Yep. For those who God has chosen. Yep. And the devil will always be on their back. Yep. And that's how, you know, his job is to. You will not go to the nightclubs or those who worship <laughs> Jesus or Muhammad or, yep. or the saints or any kind of idol. But he will be. His primary goal is to go after those who say we worship God alone. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and he will start decapitating the leader. That's how it works. Yeah. Um, 
Inshallah, we will be in God's protection. Inshallah, yeah, that's right. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, you're right. I mean, 22:52 is is yeah. It's uh, um, it says that we did not, we did not, and we did not send any messenger or any prophet yeah. before you. That Satan did not interfere with his wishes. However, God nullifies Satan's interference and establishes his proofs. And God is all knowing, all wise. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, some of the hadiths, we don't know if Prophet Muhammad said it. You know, we, I mean, I because I say this out of experience, there were so many stuff Prashad said that really makes completely, you know, nonsense. Yep. So many of them. And if you stick to that and say, You know, it's a test. If you stick to that, and, and, and you know, just for example, uh, uh, the Qibla, or, or the direction of Salat from North America. Yep. Rashad was very strong in saying that it is Southeast. Yep. And he has he, all kind of, you know. He didn't uh, praise uh, them. No, he didn't. <laughs> That's the amazing thing. No, he didn't. You know, Mr. Tucson faces a slightly Northeast. East. Yeah. Was yeah. And the way and, uh, that it was northeast, and then the group that insisted upon that, they were actually they they left that mosque. Yeah. And then they went someplace else, and they started started doing that. But you know, this is again, it's it's Satan's interference because Satan exactly. does it, what God says, you know, and and people fall for it. Again, it's you know, it's, it goes back to the same thing that I was saying that. You know, in spite of all the proofs and everything that you show, they mm. still come back with some kind of argument that they are right and they are correct. And and so, but but you know, this is not going to. You know, the recording devices are are infinite, and so no matter how you look at it, the reverse time, uh, reverse space, invert space, uh, all kinds of stuff, and you still come up with the same thing and, and it's going to show all of the deeds that we have actually uh, done in this world and uh, and so uh, you know there are no excuses on the judgment none whatsoever yep. yeah yeah just uh, verse in chapter 3 hold fast to the robe of God yeah exactly you know hold fast to the robe of God yeah. and that's what matters and you follow the message and stick to the message yeah. and you will not be misguided. Yeah. Yeah. In spite of what, the, even if the message is saying something wrong, as, as long as you are sticking to the message, you are in the same road as the message. Yes. So follow the Quran alone and, and Stick to the message. Well, you see, I mean, if the if the Quran, uh, the revelation of the Quran, it says, you know, it says that there are things that at certain times are basically impossible to explain. <coughs> <coughs> and we have seen those things in the light of these information that you get from the mathematics of the Quran. Because mm -hmm. some of these known, mathematically were not known at certain times. So you could not explain these things. I remember, you remember, you remember that they used to challenge Rashad, if this was true, if this mathematics was true, why didn't the Prophet Muhammad talk about it? Oh, many times. Many times, remember that? Yeah. And answer that question, it wasn't the time to do that. The machinery was not in place yet. Okay. So as I always say, the exponent of the 19th Mersenne prime was not known until 1962. So you cannot explain this thing during World War II. 
that chapter 42 is supposed to have 53 verses. Okay? These other things that we're talking about, about uh, Gaussian Mersenne Prime and things like that, these are this century's things, 2010. Hmm. So they were not available. We could not explain this at the time of Rashad. Could not be done because it wasn't known. Okay? has to be a time and a place for everything to come. Okay? And talking about, you know, <laughs> with Rashad saying, why didn't Muhammad uh, explain the 19? Yeah. Today, if you share with this new mathematics, with the group that we were together in the 90s and 80s, they will tell you why didn't Rashad know about it. Yeah. Same thing. They will not accept anything besides dividing 19 by, that's it. Yep. Nothing beyond that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So the test is continuous, and we will be tested, 1 and 9, 1 and 2 and 3. Yep. And you will be tested all the way to your grave. Exactly. He, he was, you know, God is fair. God is fair and just. We have to work for heaven and people work for hell too. They work for it. God doesn't put anyone to hell. That's what you work for. It. And yeah. for heaven, we have to work for heaven as well. Yes, indeed. Walaikum as Salam, Dr. Fazli. Walaikum as salam, Shakira. Yes. Can I ask you a question? So, uh, God, um, that the one that is 2240 that uh, Barry was asking about, um, about the eviction, I, I know that they were evicted after being persecuted for so many years, but by the same token, they came back to attack them. The Prophet and his people didn't go, I mean, they, get, they went. In the beginning, their small groups were attacked by the Quraysh, uh, you know, even though they were not uh, actually uh, attacking them at all. Right? No, I mean, there, was, there is never initiation of aggression on the part of the believers. Okay? I mean, we, we talk. Yes. Okay? Uh, you know, uh, we have to be very careful with this. If there is any aggression on the part of the believers, they are going to be defeated. As simple as yes. that. It's not the trait of the believers. Aggression is not the trait of the believers. As a matter of fact, it says, God says, you know, it says that, you know, that they say that we were oppressed or something. It said, my land is spacious. Go someplace else and worship me alone. That's what God is saying in the Quran. So even if that thing, you know, on your own volition, you can go someplace else and worship God alone if you are in, in, uh, in danger of being, you know, persecuted or something in some, some land. But again, God somehow will... will arrange the situation for the believers to be able to do that, to worship God alone. Yes, yes. What you said is absolutely correct. What I'm telling is that when these, when the, the, they immigrated to Medina, the people from Mecca still came to fight with them. Oh, they were, they were, yeah, they were, they were always harassing them. Yeah, I mean, as I said. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm telling. I mean, they were not attacking or anything at all. These people were coming, so these people were defending themselves. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It has to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's that's what I wanted. I mean, they were really bad that they were doing the things, even though they had already oppressed and removed them from there, and still they were constantly bothering them. Thank you so much for clarifying that. Thank you. 
Salam alaikum, peace everyone, peace Dr. Fosley. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Go ahead, please. I um I was thinking of that aggression when it came to Moses, even um when he went to Pharaoh, um even down to throwing the the staff, he didn't throw first. He he defended. He didn't offend. And so, God makes it very clear how we should behave ourselves in in terms of of, of that whole. Even something small like, well, it wasn't a small, but it was, um, it just showed us how how we don't just immediately attack, you know. And if you're with God, you're already the winner anyway, so it's no need to. That's a very good point, yeah. I also am going to say I'm going to miss you, and I hope that wherever you are, that you, God bless and keep you, and you enjoy yourself. Two weeks and then, yeah. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anything else? Hello, Ali. Welcome, Salam. On uh, 2240, to go back to that verse. Shakras. Okay, now one other message in there is the aggression. Then it says the synagogues, the chapels, the mosques, the church would have been this where God's name is frequently mentioned yes. would have been destroyed. Yes. The so called Muslims do not think Churches and synagogues or chapels, you know, they belong to, I mean, they, they see it as total idol worship place and they will destroy it and they will demolish it. Yep. You know, in, in my hometown, Mogadishu, we had eight Roman Catholic churches. They were all level, totally level. You know, and, uh, and I just look, I mean, it's just incredible, huge, beautiful <laughs> church. It was completely gutted and done, level to the ground. Yeah. Because this is, you know, that aggression God is talking about. I mean, you, do not, you do not see this verse. No. We are on blind light of worship, but you will not see this. There is no aggression. No aggression. And, you know, this place is a place of worship. I don't care what they worship. God is, they call it a place of God. But they have idol worship. You, There are idol worship in, uh, <laughs> in the mosque, but you don't know it. You're not seeing it. Yeah. But, you know, there are, there are a group of those people who really do not believe in what the guy is saying. Hmm. You know, they go to those churches or to those those places of worship to really worship God, and we don't yes. know that. That is the point. So, yeah. so that that's something that you know. Although the priest or the or the uh, mullah or whoever it is that is is promoting idol worship, those yeah. guys do not agree with him, but they are not saying anything. And deep inside, they are, they are, their intention is that they want to worship God. And that's why they go there. And we don't know that. And so destruction of those places is, gonna, is going to prevent those people from having that intention in their hearts, which God al- alone knows and nobody else knows. Yeah. yeah. Even Pharaoh's soldiers had a believer in there. Who only God knew this heart. But he was in Pharaoh's troops. Just think about it. Yeah, I mean, the, if, if, you look at, if you look at the situation of Pharaoh and the believing Egyptian, yeah. the believing Egyptian was there right in his palace. Okay? <laughs> and he was saying that he was God, but, but he came out to be a, be a believer, a very strong believer. Okay? And so his intention 
always has been to worship God alone, and he did that in spite of all of the pressures that he had from his environment that he was living in. And Pharaoh's what? Yeah. So the same thing could be in these places, it could be in the synagogues, in churches, and in chapels and mosques. There are people in there who do not agree with what is being said there, but for one reason or another, they keep their belief a secret. Yeah. Yeah. And only God knows who they are. Important, Marshall. Anything else? Any other comments or observations or questions? Sorry, sorry. Okay, you can. I was just going to mention that 2278, uh, that, uh, you know, if you say Abraham is the one who called us Muslims previously, then it contradicts the other verse that says Noah was a Muslim. Exactly, yeah. That's exactly true, okay? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the thing is that being at peace with the universe is the, is the religion of the cosmos, is the religion of everything. You see? So, so it's, this is a requirement to be at peace with God, so to speak. And if we are not, we are damaging ourselves. So, you know, thinking of that, that verse as that person being that he being Abraham, is is totally opposing the word of God in the Quran. Yeah, because Noah was Muslim too. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay, very good. So let's let's finish for tonight, okay? And we are going to do our three uh, uh, usual thing, uh, al fatihas and we have two requests for two more al fatihas So we do five of them tonight, okay? <laughs> <laughs>